Hello and welcome to F1 Livery Histories, the channel where we take a look back at the different paint jobs, racing trims and sponsor decals adopted by respective Formula 1 teams throughout the eras. Today we'll be taking a look back at a team which was established with the intention of restoring Grand Prix racing prestige to Great Britain, wresting supremacy over the sport from the continental European superpowers. An industry-backed team, which proudly represented its home nation during the earliest World Championship seasons. British Racing Motors. Founded in 1945 by racing entrepreneur Raymond Mames and chief engineer Peter Burton, operating out of Bourne, Lincolnshire, BRM produced their very first Grand Prix racing engine in 1947, the 1.5-litre 1 supercharged V16. The engine was built in conjunction with a vast number of British engineering and automotive companies, including British Steel, Standard Motors and Rolls-Royce. Over the course of time, British Racing Motors would enlist the support of over 300 British companies as the team worked towards entering the Formula 1 World Championship. The team's supporters included the Owen Engineering Firm, which manufactured the team's first Formula 1 chassis, the Type 15, which was dressed in none other than British green and featured a design derived from pre-war Formula 1 cars, such as the Mercedes-Benz W165 and Auto Union Type D. BRM would also receive the support of donations made to the team by the British public. The P15 was a powerful yet unreliable car, which failed to deliver on the team's lofty aims. The team encountered an inauspicious debut at the 1950 International Trophy, held at Silverstone, as their car failed to even make it off the grid, doing little to please the patriotic crowd in attendance. Despite its shortcomings, the P15 secured the team its first Grand Prix win, the 1950 Goodwood Trophy, with Reg Parnell behind the wheel, and was entered into the World Championship for the first time in 1951, debuting at the British Grand Prix. However, any further World Championship appearances for the Type 15 were lost, as the FIA decided to run the World Championship in accordance with Formula 2 regulations during 1952 and 1953. During this time, Raymond May sold control of the team to Sir Alfred Owen of the Owen Engineering Firm. The team returned to the World Championship in 1954, operating under the auspices of the Owen Racing Organisation, which had secured a contract to race with Maserati 250F chassis throughout the 1954 and 1955 seasons. From 1956 until 1960, the team competed with the P25, now outfitted with a 2.5-litre flat 4 engine. The car once again adopted the national racing colour of Great Britain and secured the team its first championship victory when Joe Bonnier prevailed at the 1959 Dutch Grand Prix. In 1960, the team produced the P48, BRM's first rear-engined car, which also employed the innovative use of a singular brake disc mounted at the rear of the car. 1961 oversaw the team debuting the P57 chassis, which was at first outfitted with Coventry Climax engines, as the team put work into developing a V8 engine. The following season would see Graham Hill collect his first driver's crown, piloting the BRM-powered P57 to four wins throughout the season. Hill and his teammate Richie Ginther would also secure the World Constructors title for BRM in season 1962. 1963 saw the team competing for the first time with an orange band around the car's nose, the company colour of the Owen Engineering Firm, as the team fielded both the P57 and P61 chassis. In 1964 the team produced the P261, which in the hands of Graham Hill and Jackie Stewart collected six wins between 1964 and 1966. BRM also experimented with four-wheel drive technology, building the P67 chassis. However, the car went unraced. In 1966, the team first entered the P83, powered by the radical and complex BRM H16 engine. In 1967, the team introduced the P115 chassis, followed by the V12-powered P126, P133, and P138 chassis, which were all first seen during season 1968. Midway through the 1969 season, the team introduced the P139, the final car produced in association with longtime BRM designer Tony Rudd. 1969 would also prove to be the final season wherein BRM would race with their recognised green and orange combination, as the following year BRM broke away from their national racing colours amidst the onset of commercial sponsorship. So begins our retrospective on the sponsorship liveries adopted by the prestigious BRM racing team. Introduced for the 1970 season, the P153, designed by Tony Southgate, was the first BRM Grand Prix car to race painted in the colours of their team sponsor, the white, black, brown and gold of Yardley Cosmetics. 
Yardley's colours came together in a Y formation, both on the front and sides of the car's monocoque, making for a rather modern visual identity for the team, as Formula One was dramatically changing in appearance in a multitude of ways. The P152 ran with shell fuels and Dunlop rubber, however the team would switch to Firestone tyres for 1971 with the introduction of the P160, as Yardley once again returned to sponsor the team for one final season. Sadly, 1971 would also see Joe Siffert perishing in a crash behind the wheel of a BRM at a non-championship round, held at Brands Hatch. Following 1971, BRM's sponsorship was set to change, paving the way for the introduction of one of Formula One's most closely associated tobacco sponsors. The 1972 season oversaw BRM competing officially as Marlboro BRM, and with this newly instigated deal came the appearance of the very first Marlboro team livery in Formula One. The BRMs of 1972 came painted in Marlboro's patented colours of red and white, and adopted Marlboro's now famous chevron motif. Marlboro itself was recognised with the same bold black font synonymous with their cigarette brand. Jean-Pierre Beltoise secured the team its final Grand Prix victory at the 1972 Monaco Grand Prix, piloting the P160B. 1972 was also the season the team switched to BP fuels, and competed with four different cars throughout the season. Heading into 1973, the team raced with the P163, and signed aboard STP as a technical partner. Following the 1973 season, Philip Morris Tobacco would move on from BRM, continuing to sponsor other teams in Formula 1 with its Marlboro brand. In the absence of Marlboro, BRM returned in 1974 once again sporting British Racing Green. BRM had also signed on a new title sponsor, an oil and lubricants company, Motul, which saw the French brand appearing on the bodywork of the P160E, as well as the newly produced P201. The car's livery also featured a metallic silver engine case, which displayed the team's emblem. However, 1974 would prove to be the final season of the Owen organisation's involvement in Formula One, as Alfred Owen directed control of the team onto Lewis Stanley. Henceforth, the team would operate as Stanley BRM. The Lewis Stanley entered BRMs continued the team's tradition of proudly embracing their British identity at Grand Prix level. This fact was most evident with the team's 1975 livery, which incorporated the colours of the British flag into its design. Stanley BRM branding was also seen prominently on the car's wings and engine case. However, the team's capacity to compete with the top of the field had evaporated by this point, as BRM competed as a single car entrant for season 1975, and in 1976 would compete in the season opener at Brazil only. In 1977, the team switched to a light blue and white livery, and would secure a deal with Rotary Watches, which saw gold racing lines appearing alongside the Swiss watchmaker's branding. 1977 would be the season the team produced its final Grand Prix chassis, the P207, which was outfitted with BRM's trademark V12 engine. As it transpired, the name British Racing Motors would disappear from Formula One following 1977, as Lewis Stanley folded the team. And so Formula One said goodbye to one of its major teams that competed during the halcyon years of the World Championship, which has etched out a legacy within the annals of Grand Prix history.